So that's what the story is talking about. Osar, Set kills Osar, takes over the rule of Kemet. Eventually, Heru grows up, challenges Set, defeats Set and his followers, and restores the nation. So we already had, and, and that's the part of the story where it's Heru fighting Set. Prior to that, it was Set attacking Osar. So there was a battle between Osar and Set. Then later, a battle between Set and Heru, the son of Osar and Osset. After that, there's a battle between Set and Heru, the son of Osar and Osset, and Heru Behudet, the son of Ra, and both of them fight Set together and defeat them and so forth. But first you have Osar and Set fighting, the two brothers fight. That's the context of this piece. Now, now we get into the little fictional character, Jacob. When you look at the little basic story, fictional character Jacob, regarded as the patriarch of the Israelites, important figure in Abrahamic religions and so forth, has 12 sons. Now, they'll first talk about the etymology of the name Jacob, according to the folk etymology found in Genesis, Ya'akob or Ya'akob, and Akob is derived from, Ak they'll say Akeb, but it's Akob, the way they pronounce it and so forth meaning heel, born grasping the heel of his twin brother Esau. The historical origin of the, of the name is uncertain, although similar names have been recorded. They talk about a name, you know, they find in the, they always go back to the records of ancient Kemet and so forth because they don't have original records and so forth. So, um, and then the name Israel is given to Jacob following the episode of him wrestling with an angel. But before we get to that, Jacob and his twin brother, born to Isaac and Rebecca and so forth. Um, the, the important thing about the little Jacob and Esau story, there are two brothers and they're fighting. they are twin brothers and they're fighting. They're at each other and so forth. Jacob, Esau, and um, Esau wants to, you know, he has an inheritance and so forth. Jacob takes the inheritance. The inheritance goes to Jacob. So it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of that. But the inheritance goes to Jacob. Esau wanted the inheritance. Jacob takes the inheritance. Jacob is the blessed one and so forth. But there's a contention between Jacob and Esau. Just like there's contention between Isaac and Ishmael, that's the same cycle when they stole from Heru and Set. Now this cycle is really the Osar and Set contention story. Esau, when, when it was time to give birth, Esau came out covered with red hair as if he were wearing a hairy garment and his heel was grasped by the hand of Jacob and so forth, the second born. Jacob and his twin brother Esau, Asar and Set were twins. Asar, Aset, Set, and Nebuchadnezzar. These were twins, quadruplets. So she gave birth to Esau. So Esau has the red hair, hairy, rough man, desert and all that. His name is Edom and that comes from Adama and the red earth and so forth. That's stolen from the title of Atem in Kemet. But once again, Esau is the red hairy one and the rough man and so forth. That's another title of Set. Set is the red one. He's literally called Desher, the red one. The one who governs the Desher, the red land. He's the rough red one from the desert. He's not the refined one of the black fertile land and so forth. He's the rough man of the desert. Let's switch over real quick. So that's set. And then Osar, set, the trickster, also the god of the desert, the red one and so forth. That's set. His name is also written suit. 
So that set is iset, not isu, isau, or isaw, isau is isu, that is suit, that is set. That's where they stole the name from. Now you have Asar, and we're going to look at one of his titles, and then we'll show some cosmological pieces to that. When you look at the title, Jacob, and they'll talk about heel and so forth. Um, let's get into another. It can also mean, be taken to mean, may God protect and so forth. The name comes either from the Hebrew root, keb, to follow, to be behind, but also to supplant, to circumvent, assail, overreach. So to follow, be behind, supplant, circumvent, assail, or overreach. Now, why would they say that about, we said this is Osar, and we already have set or isayet or isau or su isau isu, which is set and so forth. Now you have osar. So when you look in the book of the duat, the book of the underworld, the twelve hours of the night, the boat of Ra sails across the sky. He's Ra sailing across the sky in the boat of the Aten, the sun and so forth for the 12 hours of the day. Then he sails in the underworld for the 12 hours of the night. This is an image from the 12th hour of the night when the boat is in the underworld, is sailing in the underworld and so forth. And then eventually right before it goes through this little hole and goes back up into the sky to yeah, sunrise and so forth, so go back into the morning and the dawn. This is the final hour of the night when darkness is beginning to dissipate and the solar disk is about to go up in the earth, in the sky once again and so forth. You see the deity Nu, the father of Ra holding the boat. This is the wave energy in the underworld and so forth. This is the boat of the deities. You have Kepra the beetle, the solar disk and Ra's inside of the solar disk. Upside down, you see the goddess Newt. She's the goddess of the sky. And she's about to receive the sun in the sky. She's going to capture it and pull it in the sky. But standing, she's standing on the head of this divinity whose body is surrounded in a circle, reaching back in a circle. Circumvention, overreaching, circumvention. This is actually Asar whose body makes up the duat. So let's look at that real quick. The 12th division or 12th hour of the night is called Deshert Bayou. Close to the pylon, red souls of red spirits was the pylon of the serpent deity Reri, each side of which was guarded by the two Yurei of Aset and Nebethet. When Ra had passed through these doors, he emerged triumphantly from the duat, the underworld, and his boat floated on the waters of Nu, into the sky. So he left the underworld and went up into the sky. In the scene in which this is depicted, we see the boat containing the beetle of Kepra, which we just showed, and the disc of Ra with the five deities, Seb, Shu, Hek, Hu, and Sa, and the two deities, goddesses are Set and Nebethet, and three gods of pylons, the god Nu, is seen holding up the boat with his hands, which come forth from the water and be, uh, bear up this God. A little distance away from the boat is a sort of island which is formed by Asa, the body of the God being bent round in such a way as to cause the tips of his toes to touch the back of his head. He's circumventing or circumambulating and so forth, this duat, underworld and so forth. The text says that it is Osar himself who forms the encircling border of the Dua, of the underworld. He's the one that regulates, he's the king of the spirit realm, the underworld and so forth. His body encircles that, circumvents. 
in the true sense. On the head of the God stands the goddess Newt. Second. With arms outstretched, ready to receive Ra, and she's gonna receive him in the sky. Thus the God reaches the end of the duad and passes by an opening through its border, which is painted black. Which is that little dot right there. Um, dotted everywhere with red spots. We have seen that Ra was omnipotent in all divisions of the underworld except one, which was sacred to Asar. In this, neither Ra nor his name appears. So Asar is the one who takes the form of, encircles the entire um, underworld, the spirit realm and so forth. He reaches back, quote unquote, over reaches. Now, that's what they were saying about the, they don't understand the true etymology of the name Jacob, but they know it has something to do with supplanting or overreaching or circumventing or, or going back and so forth. Osar is taking that form, but what's important about that is the title. Kebu, the internal coils of a serpent. Keb, the mythological serpent and so forth. Keb to double, to increase. But the important part, when you see this medut right here, circuit, company, group, order, series. It's talking about a circuit. The circuit of the delta. The circuit of the semeru. A great assembly. Keb, a group of people, a company, a multitude. That's a circuit or collection of people. His body is in the form of the keb or the circuit. He, in, that, in that rendering right there, that imagery, that iconography, this is Osar as keb. He's the one who is the circuit of the duat. He encirculates or encircles the spirit realm including the company or the group of people, the group of people, the company, the multitude, Keb or Akeb or Yakeb or Jacob or Jacob encompasses a group of people, the children of Jacob and so forth, the quote unquote Israelites. He's the circuit that encompasses or encircles everything. Also said he was a supplanter, took over. The reduplication of Keb is Keb, Kebi, to overthrow, to defeat, to massacre. He defeated Esau, Osar defeats Sut or Set. We look further in the you know, um, Shabaka text, they talk about Osar being triumphant, um, overthrow Set and so forth at the end. Um, but he's the supplanter, meaning the one who overthrows or defeats, Keb. Keb Amentet, um, Amentet is the spirit realm. That's the title of the spirit realm, meaning the hidden land. Keb Amentet is the abode of the heart of Asar. Asar is in the form of Keb, the divinity, as Keb, the circuit. He is Keb, or Akeb, which is later corrupted into Yaqab, or Yaakov, or Yaakov, and Jacob, and so forth the one who encircles or encompasses an entire group of people or regulates an entire group of people. Um, when they talk about the 12 sons, later in the Greek traditions and so forth and pseudo metaphysics, they'll talk about Jacob is the son and the 12 sons are the 12 sons of the Zodiac. Prior to that, when we talk about Asar as the divinity, Keb, the circuit, also the supplanter, the one who overthrows, Set or Iset or Isau or Sut, Esau and so forth. He governs Orion and he has 12 assistants, 12 deities. So that's that cab right there. Now, and in fact, just to prove this point about him overcoming, ultimately overcoming Set. We go back to the Shabaka text, section 5b. The great throne of Menefer, 
that gives joy to the heart of the gods in the house of Ptah is the granary of Tanan, the mistress of all life, through which the sustenance of the two lands is provided, owing to the fact that Osar was drowned in his water. Aset and Nebuchadnezzar looked out, beheld him, and attended to him. Heru quickly commanded Aset and Nebuchadnezzar to grasp Osar to prevent his drowning. They heated in time and brought him to land. And here's the key portion. He entered the secret portals in the glory of the lords of eternity and the steps of him who rises in the horizon on the ways of Ra at the great throne. So he rose up into the sky connect, in connection with Ra. He entered the palace and joined the gods of Tenen, Ptah, Lord of Years. Thus Osar came into the earth at the royal fortress to the north of this land to which he had come. His son Heru arose as king of Upper Kemet, arose as king of Lower Kemet in the embrace of his father Osar and the gods in front of him and behind him. So at that point, Heru had you know, waged war, but then Osar comes, they resurrect him. He goes up into the heavenly realm and now he's ruling in the heavenly realm. Heru is ruling on earth. Osar has defeated Set. And then there are um, texts in the pyramid text when they talk about Osar's place on his throne, and he forces Set to submit and so forth. So Osar has overcome the quote unquote supplanter, um, the one who overthrew Keb, the one whose body Keb in circles is the circuit of the duat and so forth. Keb or Akeb, or Keb and so forth controls or overthrows Isu or Isau, Esau and so forth, the red one, the hairy one the desert one and all of that. This is what we're talking about. This is the precinct of Mut, the great divinity Mut, great mother goddess Mut in Aset, Apetu, or, you know, so-called misnomer Karnak, one of the temples that we visit when we go to Kemet. This is also in the temple of Aped Asetu. I'm in and I'm in that. But this is the great triad. I'm in, Mut, and Kensu, so called Kensu, Neferhetep, Heru, and so forth. I'm in, Mut, and Kensu. They're prominent throughout Ta'ap, so called Thebes, and so forth, but other places as well. But you'll see them because they're great temples and sanctuaries are there. And the temple of Apet Asetiu, or so-called Karnak, is the largest religious complex in the world. So, so the great mother Mut. Mut means mother. Mut also means water, ocean. So the water itself is Mu or Mut. Um, and she's the great mother of the oceans and so forth. Everything comes out of the ocean. That's why she's a great, a great mother. Amenet is the great mother, period. But then just like you have Amen and Amenet, the great mother and great father. Um, and your being, you're the great being, but what's the most abundant substance within your being is mu or moot, which is water. So she's the great mother and all the organs exist within the water, within the body. Just like water is the most abundant resource on earth, of course. Um, there's a water that permeates the entire great you know, body of creation that is moot on the feminine side and mu on the masculine side and so forth. So that's who she is. That's why she's one of the great mother divinities. This is the temple of Amen in Ta'apet, Per Amen. And then this is the precinct of Mut. It's a certain region, a precinct within that temple complex with a number of smaller temples in it. And it's um, encircled halfway by this great lake, Asher, Asherer. That's what that is. Now, so once again, this is just another picture of that. And these are the little, this is a little temple right here. So you can see how large this, this lake is. It's the sacred lake of the great mother divinity, Mut. Ritual purifications for the divinities, for the people done in that sacred lake. She's the great mother that governs, you know, everything is born out of the water, even the landmass itself, the entire earth was was covered by water, covered by moots, and then she gives birth 
by the landmass rising up, the first landmass of Earth becomes Afuraka, Afuraka in Africa and so forth. Plant life, animal life, mineral life, Afurakani, Afurakani, human life, ultimately is born of and nourished by Mut. So everything comes out of that and everything is purified by that. Now, that sacred lake, Ish, Rer, that's the name of the lake. Some will spell it Asher, now they spell it Isher, but there are two different spellings. You'll see there are a number of different spellings here. The court of Thebes that contained the Temple of Mut and that sacred lake is, you know, um, in that surrounding that temple and so forth. So you see the reed, which is the ah, but also i. This is a cistern of water, this rectangular, which is the sh sound. Then the open mouth, which is the r sound, the r sound. And when you say er, your mouth is open like that. That's the er or r sound. So that's e, sh, and er, isher, or isher. And then you have the three wavy water lines that shows that this has to do with water. There's another version, which is ish, e, and then the sh sound. And then the lion, once again, is the r. So this is, this is isher. And this is also ish, er. But then they have the little chick, which is the u, which is isheru, 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 isheru. And then the water, wavy water lines, which is determinative. Then another spelling. But here's two separate spellings which are important. E, which is the re, the sh sound, the r sound, and then another r. Ish rer, ish rer. And then you have another spelling, the re, the sh sound, the cistern, the um you know, open mouth, which is R, and then the lion, which is a different R. Ishrer, Ishrer, and the determinative symbol, the nude symbol that represents it's a nation, it's a polity, a political entity. Ishrer. The root of the term, meaning fire or flame, roast meat, daily burnt offering, burnt offering, ritual, sacrifice to a divinity, and so forth. Then the root of Isher or Isher, Sheriu, the lesser divinities, but also, which is important, Sher, Shera, the root of Isher or Isher or Isher, to stop up, to block, to wall up, to close, to obstruct the passage, Sher, Shera, obstruction, a bar, share, obstacle, share, bond, tire, fetter. And then you have Osar, who is within Isher or Ishrer, Ishrer. And uh, some of you can already see what we're talking about is Osar, which is Keb, within Ishrer which is corrupted into Ishrer and Israel, 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 and so forth. Now let's look at the silly little cosmology that they talk about with regard to Jacob and why he is called Israel, and then you'll see where that comes from. And it ties in, of course, to the functioning of Asa. So as usual, when they're writing about these terms, they don't know the origin of it. It's often interpreted as struggle with God. In these phrases, refers to the patriarch Jacob, who, according to the Hebrew Bible, was given the name after he successfully wrestled with the angel of the Lord. So let's look at that. Jacob transported his family and flocks across the ford by night, recrossed back to send over his possessions and all that stuff. There a mysterious being appeared and the two wrestled until daybreak. Jacob or Keb wrestled uh, an entity to daybreak. 
when the being saw that he did not overpower Jacob because Jacob, Akeb, Keb meaning to slaughter or overthrow, so he couldn't overthrow Jacob. He touched Jacob on the sinew of his thigh. Um, and as a result, Jacob developed a limp and so forth. Because of this, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh and all that. Um, Jacob then de demanded a blessing and being declared in Genesis, Genesis that from then on, Jacob would be called Israel, 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 the one that struggled with the divine angel, um, one who has prevailed with God, a man seeing God, he will rule as God and all of that. Um, so, it says because the terminology is ambiguous the, um, and inconsistent, and because this being refused to reveal his name, there are varying views as to whether he was a man, an angel, or God. So they have these different debates about, you know, what the origin of the name Israel is. And let's look at that. Israel, one that struggled with the divine angel, one that prevailed, um, or a prince with God and so forth, to prevail and so forth. So he he's tending flocks, and then somebody comes after him. Now he has to contend with this individual. He's fighting this individual, going back and forth. Now let's look back at the actual cosmology. Asar is in Ishrer, and the root of Ishrer, Isher, obstruction, obstacle, to stop, to block, to, to obstruct, obstruct passage and so forth. He was fighting with him um, until the daytime, fighting all the way up until the daytime. So there's obstruction, there's fighting, Sherer, Sher, fighting, obstruction, and so forth. Eventually he overcomes him. And then he gets a blessing. Hold on a second. So there's an association with a region. Eventually, the region, the sacred region, this sacred region of Mut, the precinct of the Temple of Mut is called Asher, a quarter of Thebes that contained the Temple of Mut. Then there's a sacred lake within that region that's governed by her where the ritual purification takes place. It's a sacred place, one of the most sacred places in ancient Kemet. But the whole precinct, that quarter of the, the city, is called Ishrer. So there's a quarter of the city called Israel, uh, corrupted into Israel, Israel, in ancient Kemet. This is where they stole the term from. The sacred purification place. Ishrer, where the fire, flame, roast meat for the daily burnt offering. So he's fighting against a spirit that's a, a divinity, he's contending with the divinity, a divine being, and so forth. And then he receives a blessing. And when you talk about daily burnt offerings, ritual invocation, ritual sacrifice for the quote unquote blessings of the divinity, that's what take that's what's taking place. When he's fighting against this share, plural sheru, the lesser deity, meaning one of the gods or goddesses, in their language, they would say an angel. He's fighting one of the sheru and so forth. He gets that title, there's obstruction, binding, and so forth, but he he fights, fights through it. But once again, if you're talking about he meets with the divinity and he contends with the divinity until daylight. In the 12th hour of the night, Asar in the form of Keb, the one who's encircling the duat and so forth, the circuit. Keb is contending with the spirit until daylight. The 12th hour of the night is the time period when darkness dissipates and then daylight comes and the boat of the Aten, the sun, goes up into the sky. He's Keb, Keb, circuit and so forth, receives, you know, transmits the, you know, um, you know, he, of course, he's fighting set and so forth, fighting the darkness and so forth. And then the darkness is dissipated by the light of Ra. And then he gives 
through the goddess Newt, you know, the solar disk goes out of the sacred boat that's in the underworld. Osar gives it to the goddess Newt. She takes it into the sky. And then the light comes, it dissipates the darkness. He contends with the, you know, divinity until the daylight comes, then the blessing comes and so forth. They talk about Asar going up with Ra into the sky. We just read that from the Shabaka text. So after Asar is resurrected for the second time, um, then he, well, you know, with the assist, assistance of Heru, Aset and Nebuchadnezzar, then he goes into the royal fortress in Minefer and everything, goes up into the sky and functions as a divinity with Ra and everything in beauty and, and excellence and all of that. So, but first he has to contend with darkness until the daylight comes. And when he's contending with darkness, he's Keb. Keb or Jacob or Yaqab is contending with darkness, contending with the divinity of darkness, which is set. When he overcomes that, he goes up into the sky. He becomes, who does he become after that? He becomes Asar M. Israel, Asar in Israel. So that's the place of Ishrer, the place of purification, going to the sacred waters of Mut, ritual purification. When you see the sacred lake of Mut and so forth, that they would talk about the deities going to that lake to purify themselves, as well as the priests and priestesses performing those purifications for the people themselves. So once he gets to finish contending with the darkness, fighting with the divinity until daylight comes, then he goes up into the sky to be with Ra, as the Shabaka text says, and there's a purification. He's Asar M. Ishrer. Ishrer. So that's where the whole Israel comes from. That's the connection to Asar. And then there's one other piece we want to pull up real quick in our book, Kemet, Hena, Toro. Well, two other pieces, but we mentioned this earlier in the course, but just so you can see that when people talk about the metaphysics of, you know, the biblical characters and so forth, and there are certain things that they know about and certain things they don't. Later on, yes, the Greeks would talk about this and Gnostics and so forth. Jacob representing the sun and the 12 tribes are the 12 signs of the zodiac and so forth. Later on, that was, you know, that's how they would be interpreting these things. But originally, when you're talking about Osar and the 12 quote unquote sons of Osar or 12 deities who are his attendants. When you look in the Runu Perd and Maru, we talked about this before, the seven cows and their bull, which is the seven Het Heru divinities, sometimes seven cows, sometimes seven women, the seven Het Heru. That's the Pleiades star system. Right next to the Pleiades star system, when you look in the sky, is the system, the star constellation of the bull, Taurus, but that is Pata Men right here. Then next to that, these four rudders plus the 12 bearded male divinities, those four rudders represent the four sons of Heru. And then you have 12 divinities who are the 12 assistants of Osar, who is called Osar, 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 or Ryan. The Europeans call this the shield of Orion, and then this collection of stars is Orion the hunter. We have the proper information, the four rudders of the sky, and sometimes they're shown in four divinities, the four sons of Heru, Amis, Amisti, um, Kepsenwef, Dwamutef, and Hap, the four sons of Heru, and then that's the shield, and then these 12 divinities are actually called You'll see these 12 divinities pulling the boat of Ra um, in the underworld, but they're also called the Sahu 12, the 12 stars of Orion. There are 12 deities who are attendants of Sahu. 